Now we switch to the, the federal sphere. That's, um, that's just an absolute train wreck. Let me, let's be honest, the, the Liberal Party might as well pack up and leave them in. They're hopeless in Queensland and they're also hopeless federally and they're getting worse by the day. Why the hell haven't they just done, put an inquiry into the, the, um, the citizenship of MPs to get this cleared up once and for all? You know, it's, 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 it's like a band-aid being pulled off incredibly slowly and the pain is being exacerbated. Um, it needs to, this needs to be settled straight away. And, and this is typical Turnbull. The man is, is a vacillator. He always is stalling and, 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 and t his timidity in making hard decisions is, is legendary. Uh, he's the antithesis of a leader. He's the anti-leader. Um, and, and this is a classic symptom of, of his, his um, control of the Liberal Party. And, and of course, the team he has around him, I mean, the revelations about uh, Christopher Pine. I mean, um, I, if I have time, I'll, 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 I'll now slot in a character reference for Christopher Pine uh, from Corey Bernardi, which is one of the most scathing critiques of, of a person I've actually heard. It's quite incredible. Um, and he actually apparently lived in the same street as, as Christopher Pine. And, uh, and boy, talk about the ultimate in bucketing. Oh, they've been trying to for, forever. He has been the most destructive, cancerous growth within the Liberal Party. Uh, he is solely responsible for the lack of success in South Australia because he doesn't care about policy, he doesn't care about principle, he only cares about power. And so he will destroy the, the well-being of the body in order to cement him or one of his little gang into a position of influence. And historically, in South Australia, the wets get in, they destroy you know, the finances, they destroy the credibility of the organisation, then it's left to the Conservatives to go in and rescue it, uh, they rebuild it to a point, and then you know, the numbers are done against them where it all happens in a cycle. And you go through his track record. In federal parliament, he's never demonstrated loyalty to anything. Uh, he's never had a capacity to prosecute a, an argument um, or, a, or a policy sense and ever, ever achievement there. And he's such a brutal player that people continue to keep him in, in the inner circle in the hope that he'll you know, be the crocodile that eats them last. And Peter, you're going to hate this, but Tony Abbott fell for that as well. Oh, I um, fell for because, it, Corey. I uh, freely he, admit he, I fell for it as well. He, he, he is terrible. I've known him since he was seven. He was a dreadful bloke when he was seven. And I'm telling you now, he's getting worse. I haven't been a fan of Pine for a, a long time. Well, I've never been a fan of Pine, but, but uh, the more and more I see of Pine, the less and less I want to see, to be honest with you. He's the career politician we just don't want in this country. I want good managers. I want people who are actually competent at doing their jobs. I remember the good old days we used to... Now, now I'm going to quote a Labor guy here. So it goes across the benches. In the old days of the Hawke-Keating times, that we had people like John Button. He was in the Senate, Senate and he was fantastic. He set up the car plan, a way of actually providing Australians with cheaper motor vehicles and still keeping the manufacturers in Australia, but, but having a plan that they could, they could work around, uh, you know, certainty. He understood that business needed that. Uh, but we don't have that mentality these days. I mean, everyone was hoping that Malcolm Turnbull would have a bit of nous because he was, a, he was a businessman who made money. He's just another hack lawyer from what I can gather. He doesn't, he maybe just lucked onto that, that the, the, the hundreds of millions he made out of the Aussie email deal. I mean, I, I don't know. You, 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 it doesn't seem like he's a particularly savvy business person. He certainly doesn't seem to have a clue with politics and he can't, he can't read the electorate. And, you know, as I say in America, the optics are very important. And as far as, as Turnbull's concerned, he, he just, well, he's a negative barometer, as, as Richo said earlier this week. Well, it's either, either Richo or Mark Latham, I can't remember actually, one of the two uh, actually said that, that uh, the Turnbull, whatever Turnbull says, you basically go with the opposite and you're pretty safe because he's... His judgment is that bad. This is a crisis in political leadership, and again, it's Turnbull. Turnbull stood in the parliament in August 
lecturing the Labor Party on the other side and virtually lecturing the High Court when he said, quote, the leader of the National Party, the Deputy Prime Minister, is qualified to sit in this House and the High Court will so hold. Well, it's one thing to be arrogant. It's another for your judgment to be totally flawed. The, the fact is that the High Court unanimously did not so hold. Unanimously. Well, Alan, I don't know if you're a fan of the great American sitcom Seinfeld, but they had a classic episode called Opposite Day that everything that someone said, the opposite was true. Yes. That now applies to Malcolm Turnbull. Everything he says, the opposite is true. Every day of his prime ministership is opposite day. And this is just another example of it. He didn't want the audit. The audit's necessary. He thought they'd all be safe in the High Court, particularly Barnaby Joyce. The opposite was true. This bloke is a walking disaster. It's opposite A walking day. disaster.